I'm by world-renowned orthopedic surgeon Dr. Bert Mandelbaum and also former pro soccer player Stuart Holden. We are having a conversation about the importance of protecting your children from sports concussions, which is so important. We've been seeing so much about this, whether it's at the cinema, you know, in the Will Smith movie, Concussion, or we're talking about it in soccer. Um, let's get a science lesson here behind this first, Doctor. What, what is the, what's the science behind a concussion? A concussion is a disturbance to the brain by a direct or indirect force. Could be, from, okay. could be from a ball, could be from another person's elbow, could be from a head, a knee, the ground. Any of those things can cause a concussion. Okay, so I want to roll some video and explain what's happening to the brain itself. Exactly, this is a great video that really shows, you can see the head bending and then the contact comes through the object that it hits and then the brain responds as it goes back and forth in what we call a contra coup type of injury. And here from the side you can see the impact, imagine it's the ground, mm -hmm. the brain moves within the skull and then the consequences occur. And what those, are they? Those are the signs and symptoms you get immediately. You can get loss of consciousness. You get knocked out. You can develop a seizure. You could lose your mentation, you could lose your memory of the situation, your judgment, your attention span, you could develop headaches, mm -hmm. all of which are the consequences of that kind of impact. The contra, what did you say, the contra? Contra coup. Okay. Contra coup. The first there's the impact, and, and then and on the, the other the side, impact. the coup. How important is that second sort of impact, if you will, in the concussion process? Itself. Is that the big? Well, it's all together because the brain is moving within that solid object. Mm -hmm. The brain moves from one side to the other side and exactly how those forces are translated to what nerves and, and how they're injured. We don't know those details, but we do know the consequences. What sure. are the consequences? I mean, could you di can you die from it if you're hit too hard from a, con from a concussion? Well, if the forces are really high from some type of major car crash or airplane mm -hmm. crash, exactly, the pressure goes really high. Those are the most extreme situations that we see. Stuart, what's Stuart. it feel like? You've had one, right? Yeah, I think so. And you, your teammates <laughs> yeah. also have had more. Yeah. You've had one, but your teammates have had more than yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, I, I was fortunate, I guess, in one sense that I retired through another injury, which is knees. I had players and teammates and friends that had to retire through concussions. and. Uh, they're still struggling with that to this day is players that Dr. Mandelbaum knows, players that uh, you know can't get out of bed in the morning, players that have to be in dark rooms. Well, yeah. what's your um, story? What happened? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was hit in a game and by a goalkeeper straight in, straight in the head and hit the floor, had a massive hematoma on, on my head, and I, was, I woke up. I was like, I'm good. Let, let me keep playing. And I was lucky enough to have a trainer that knew the symptoms and knew that I needed to come out of the game, knew that I needed to be checked, and, and ultimately took a week off, and I was fine. I've, it, I've had no symptoms since, but uh, I'm, and so I'm fortunate in that sense. What is this? One of those things, follow my finger, you know, son? How do you know if these guys need to come out? Well, we have these great tools. We call the side Sideline Concussion Assessment Tool, SCAT, it's called. Okay. The acronym, SCAT3 is the acronym. So we go by, we ask questions about where they are, what they're doing, what they're thinking about, what their phone number is, and then we make a judgment as to whether or not they can play. Well, well you know, the football players in particular, they have a concussion. They, a week, two weeks, they're fine. What are the long-term effects of this? Will this something? Is this something that will come back to perhaps your teammates uh, who've had several? Yeah, right? later on in life, that can do damage, more damage. Or? It's been a big thing in NFL football players. Will it come back? Multiple impacts have had consequences to multiple football players that we're learning so much about it since 2005 in Ben Amalo's expose as he published that article about the injury to the brain resulting in this kind of what we call CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is really the big question and problem we have today in medicine. So we, um, what are we looking at here? Is this actual damage to the brain? After this is actually what really Bennett Amalo did the pathologist uh -huh. who looked at all these things, looked at all these brains. These brains were smaller, but they had these changes, these tangled webs of fibrils that the brains that have been injured too much get. Mm -hmm. And that's been associated with the depression, the change of behavior, the erraticness of the behavior. That's what CT is about. That photograph is showing what the brains look like 
when they've been injured. Let's go, let's just take this in, uh, a step further. So, Stuart, you're coaching now, right? You're yeah, boys, doing a bit of youth coaching. Youth yeah. coaching, girls, boys, combination. Both, a bit of everything. A bit of everything. So we've seen an increase, I understand, especially with the, the, the girls and concussions and whatnot. There's been some new rules, I guess, implemented. Yeah, U about. U.S. Soccer just introduced a new mandate back in December, which is no heading for the ages under 10, so uh -huh. 10, 10 years and younger. And, and heading then, is just for heading the ball, repetitive heading, okay. and then from 10 to 12, uh, limited heading. But you know, as Dr. Mandelbaum can tell you as well, that there's no direct link between heading the ball as a youth soccer player uh, uh -huh. with the proper technique and all of that to concussions. It's more so the impact. So when you're going up to head a ball, you're challenging with another opponent, and it would. Be be Bert and I, the clashing of heads, or it would be an elbow, or it would be the landing, uh, and that's kind of where the real danger lies. So the reasoning behind that mandate was, hey, let's not head the ball where the ball's up in the air. Let's keep it on the ground so it's now a safer sport. But you, and you know, but when you bring up a point about youth, are their brains still developing at that point? Are they more susceptible when they're younger to get a concussion because of what's going on? Well, interestingly enough, that in big guy soccer, the incidence is one in every 20 games. But if you're 10 and below, it's one concussion in every 200,000 games. So it's a very low, low incidence. Mm -hmm. Our goal, our goal collectively is how we make our game even safer. How do we reduce the risk? Well, I know, Doctor, you suggest that you should take a test for a concussion before you potentially even have a concu concussion. Why, why do you, you say know, that? We've got these great tools these days, the impact testing, where we can take clubs and schools and measure their baseline, see where they are today, and then once they're injured, then we can then compare the data to that, which gives us a good parameter to assess exactly what's going on. So we, your daughter's name is? Kennedy. Kennedy. We, okay, we couldn't get her because she's way too young, but we do have a she's Kennedy months, here. Yeah. 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 She's, she's, she's hitting the this. ball, she's definitely going to get a concussion. <laughs> but we do have a Kennedy here. Can we step over? Because I'd like for you to have a couple of coaching techniques on what we're doing right, and I want to know when we do it wrong, what's actually happening. So let's go join Kennedy over here, who's standing by. I think one of the cutest little girls yes, I've seen. Yes, very serious. Hi, Kennedy, how are you? Good. Good, are you ready for a little lesson in how to, now you play soccer, right? Right. You do, and how old are you? Nine. Nine, okay, have you so met this Stuart? This my daughter at nine. Yeah, right. Soccer uniform, soccer ball, cleats. So we're gonna check your technique out. Let's talk a little bit about the proper. May I get to? Can I borrow your ball here? Okay. So if I if I'm gonna, I'll just toss this to you. You're gonna show us the proper way to do this. Is yep. that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go up. Okay. So now. The, the proper technique is to right on the front of the forehead. And Kenny, you can you know how to properly head it, right? right. You show me where on the head to head it. And do you know why that is? So you don't get a concussion anywhere else. <laughs> well, <that's, yeah. laughs> she's well educated, yeah. yeah. So that, so actually, Kennedy's a perfect example because she's nine years old, uh -huh. and as we mentioned earlier, the the age is going to be ten for heading the ball. So yeah. she's at an age now where we want to teach this proper technique. So when she turns ten, she'll be able to have the proper awareness. She'll know the technique, and when she starts heading the ball, she'll be doing yeah. it in the right way, and she'll be limiting her exposure to those types of things. So, doctor, just real quick, doctor, why is this the right way and this not the right way? Again, the key, as Stuart said, is we want to dissipate the forces from the ball. Uh -huh. We've got our neck muscles, our body, our core all prepared to receive the impact. As a consequence, the forces are minimal to our brains, uh -huh. and these young kids really don't have a significant injury as a consequence. Kennedy, you want to come over and give it a try? Yeah. Hopefully yeah, I can done. give you a little. So she's going to try to do it. Let's see if I can. I'm just going to give you a little over. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that yeah, was my Perfect. Bad. That was try good. One more time. You ready? I'll get you. Nice. Yes. nice. How did that feel? Good. Now, she Good. wouldn't be able to teach. Yeah. So, I mean, I can show a, a bad example if sure. you want to see. Yeah. That, I mean, a bad example would toss? be one that's, you know, where you're not looking. Because when, when I'm heading you, when I'm heading right at you, it would uh -huh. be right on the front of the head. So, again, that's a, that's a good one. A uh -huh. bad one, you'd be, your head would be down. You can't see. You and it would that. be coming off the top. The main thing is you're not looking at the ball. So, you're looking here. The ball's hitting the top of your head. Kennedy could run into me. Hit heads, and you could be. It out comes down to discussion. technique, is what yeah. we're talking. Whether it's football, whether it's soccer, anything where there could be potential collision with the head. We've yep. got to start at this level because a lot of the guys have already been taught and have to be retaught. Well, I mean, we, we learn how to pass the ball, we learn how to shoot, yeah. so we should learn how to head and be prepared and be safe. And ultimately, look, we talked about it in sports. Whether you're a runner or a tennis player, there's there's a potential for injury, yeah. any type of injury. If you're safe and you're prepared, you know, you try to limit that. Want to give Mark well, a run for his money? Why don't you take that ball? Well, hang on, down. hang on. We got to do this. Oh, we got to do it? a little oh, favor. We're sign it, Would Mark. you mind signing a little something here for Kennedy? Oh, so Kennedy, you have, one. there you go. Because she's a midfielder, right? Autographed midfielder. All right, there get an autographed soccer ball. Look at that. 
No. Thank you. Good. You're welcome. Give this one a good kick. There you go. And is there takeaway? <laughs> is there takeaway? The takeaway. Oh, it's all about, excellent. from our perspective, prevention. We got to keep these young kids healthy. It's an amazing time in the history of sport. We're hearing about concussions, but all we want to do is minimize the risks and maximize what the benefit from sport. It's a great sport. We want to keep them healthy. We want to keep them having fun. And that's the take home message.